Hey, it's Melanie here from Event Planning Blueprint TV. Welcome back to another episode. Do you ever feel like you struggle with money? Do you feel like you often can't get ahead or you're stressed because of the lack of money in your life? Well, today on Event Planning Blueprint TV, we have a very special episode and we're going to tackle the money beliefs that limit your success. My guest today is Denise Duffield Thomas, who is the author of Get Rich Lucky Bitch and Lucky Bitch Money Bootcamp. Denise and I first met a couple of years ago in the Dominican Republic at a beautiful resort that we um, were at when we attended a conference, and she made such an impact on me that I asked her to be here today to share some of her beliefs, as well as her book, Get Rich Lucky Bitch, with you. So Denise, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Melanie. I'm so excited because... As you know, I love talking about money and I think it's really good to get into some of the juicy questions that I know you have for me. And we you know, women need to hear this stuff. They need to hear about real women talking about money. I agree. And it's one of the topics that I love talking about as well. Um, and I know even just from with my friends, there are very few people who enjoy talking about it. So I get really excited about this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, so let, let's just um, start with maybe just a little bit about the journey and your journey with money um, and how you got to the point where you're at now. Mm. So I've wanted to be an entrepreneur, I think, my whole life. And to be honest, I think my money blocks came in very, very early for me as an entrepreneur. So I started out doing little things around my town when I was about nine years old. I wanted to... <laughs> Uh, have a garage sale. I wanted to sell bracelets and I was the top salesperson of chocolates for my fundraising team for, for my dance school. But it honestly didn't occur for me to make any money out of those things, which I know sounds really stupid, but I was just doing it for the joy of it, for the love of it. And that almost, that pattern actually went still into my 20s where I was constantly coming up with creative ideas, which a lot of entrepreneurs do, but it didn't occur to me that I could make money out of those creative ideas. And so I really struggled for a long time of going from corporate to wanting to be an entrepreneur, but not knowing how to make money out of being an entrepreneur. And it wasn't until I started um, working on my own personal development that I realized that it wasn't a matter of ambition or talent. It was there was something else that was going on in my mind that was stopping me from from earning money. And then when of course I started looking at the fact that this is a systemic problem across a lot of women. You know, we we earn less on the dollar, and it's we can't just blame men for that. There is definitely something that's going on within us that is also not making it happen, but contributing to mm -hmm. that, right? So when I started working with my own coaching clients, when I started out as a life coach, I was helping people with all sorts of problems and I loved it, but I really started really especially loving working with female entrepreneurs and helping them with their marketing and helping them with their confidence and mindset. But what I realized, it was that money stuff that was coming up again and again for them. They didn't know what to charge. They didn't know how to charge. Like some of them had prices but they couldn't bring themselves to charge the right price to their clients. They were discounting all over the place. They were feeling bad every time they, they had to have a money conversation, like a refund request or a default payment. And it was just so um, apparent to me that women really needed to work on the mindset stuff around money. And that's when I really started to um, work with that specifically with my clients. And I realized that sometimes for, for us, we just need to get a few things straight in our head around money and, and in our energy, and then it's okay. Then we can receive money for what we do. And so since then, I, I wrote a book called Get Rich, Lucky Bitch, and um, I have my course, which is the Lucky Bitch Money Boot Camp, and I just focus on just that one part, just getting helping women with their mindset around their money blocks. And I don't teach them how to make money. I don't tell them what they should charge or anything like that. It's actually once you get clear with that kind of thing, you can just get on with the business that you're supposed to be in. It's and so make money true. from it. Yeah, absolutely. I know I went through a bit of a transition as well. And I do want to ask you a question around that. Um, but just to share a little story, I went through a transition where 
I was like either not charging enough for my services or I wasn't making enough overall, you know, just in life in general. And then I went through this shift and it was, it was definitely a mental shift. And I went on to, you know, make more money than I'd ever make and buy properties and have rental properties. And it was just like, and it was like this whole big weight came off of my whole, entire body, not even just my shoulders. It was so much easier once that shift happened. So absolutely, and you're right. It is a mental game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely is a mental game. So, um, having said that, what kind of things can people do to shift their mindset? You know, because some of these stem back from childhood experiences, or even things that have happened to us later in life. Like maybe we're laid off, or you just don't have job security, so you're always, you know, you're holding your dollars tight. What what kind of things can people do to shift their minds? Well, I'm glad you said it about the childhood thing because I find that's a really good place to start. Start at the very beginning because often we were so influenced by our parents and our parents' views around money and things that they told, not only just told us about money, but the things that they showed us around money. And the very first exercise that I get women to do is to make a list of all of their money memories anything that they remember hearing about money or seeing around money um, with their family, with their greater family, at school, and then you can move on to, to later things like jobs and because usually the pattern was actually created much earlier but the situations maybe have come from jobs or being, an, being a woman in the workplace, that can bring up some really juicy stuff as well. And once you have that all written down, and I really do recommend you actually write it down in, in pen in your own hand, is you can go back and look at patterns and see what beliefs might be underpinning those patterns. Do you have a belief from those experiences that it's really hard to make money, that you have to work hard to make money, that maybe men have all the power and it's not okay for women to make money, that, that rich women are bitches, that rich people are greedy. There's usually, I would say, a two to three um, major patterns that you can see in there. And if you can't see them, maybe it's it's a, a good process to talk with other people about it and maybe you you know, share your money memories out aloud. And of course, on my money boot camp, that's what people do. They share their money memories. And it, but most of the time, it's pretty clear what some of your top blocks are just based on that exercise. Yeah, I can only imagine. I'm just thinking about the things that happened even in childhood, you know, the things that I heard or not even just from my parents, but even, you know, other family members. And uh, it's funny you say that because I actually had this experience and I, I'm sure this hasn't changed in my entire life, but at Christmas, uh, sorry, it wasn't at Christmas time, it was a family gathering recently and there was a lot of conversation around money, but it was always about lack of. And I'm always struggling to like find that balance of like, okay, there is, I don't believe there is a lack of, but yet I'm around people who do and finding that balance, you know, and so that I don't take on that belief or take it on again. Yes, exactly. And you know what, what you can do from that list and what you, when you know your patterns, that knowledge is just so much power. And I really like to say to women, you know, you are not broken just because you have money blocks doesn't mean that you're not meant to be successful because I still have money blocks and I am very, very successful now. And I thought that money would solve those problems and actually money is just a tool. It doesn't solve anything in itself but now I can still make a lot of money because I'm aware of those money blocks and how they try and sabotage me or really how I sabotage myself because of those money blocks. But I really don't think they ever truly go away and that's okay. So if they don't go away, because I'm actually going to do this exercise, I love it. Um, if they don't go away, how do you get past them or how do you move past that, that belief system? Yeah, well, as I said, knowledge is power. So if you know what your main money, money blocks are, say you've got two or three. So one for me is you have to work really hard to make money. Mm. And so that one comes up for me. It comes up regularly. So when I first started my business and somebody paid me money, to sit down with them and have a conversation, that triggered my money block because I was like, this isn't hard. How can, and it was a very small amount of money compared to what I would charge today, but it still triggered me, right? But then every year in my business as I've made more money, so when I, when I hit six figures, I was like, well, this is too easy. This isn't right. So for a couple of weeks after I had my best month ever that year, 
I completely sabotaged myself because it hit that block. Mm. When I turned my live course into a home study program, that hit my block again because I was like, well, I don't have to even talk to people this time. You know, this is cheating. Like this, this is too easy. And then it hit again. Um, I think the year after when I did a big affiliate partnership with somebody, and I only had to send a couple of emails, and I made a, a big chunk of cash. That sabot uh, again made me feel like, oh my god, this is too easy. And so you can see how it, it hits again and again, but the numbers are different, right? Because for the universe, it's like an extra zero. It, it doesn't make any difference. So what I do in that situation, because knowledge is power and I know that's my sabotage, I can kind of identify a few behaviours that are red flags for me and one of them is procrastination. As soon as I start procrastinating on something, I know that it's triggered my money block. So if I procrastinate, for example, writing a sales page or creating a new product or a new passive income program or a new funnel for my business, I know... And I can very quickly kind of course correct because I know that that's a trigger for me of hitting that money block of it's, it has to be hard to make money. Mm -hmm. And when you know those behaviours, you can stop them in its tracks. So I talk to my mastermind buddies. I share in my money boot camp and say, guys, guess what? I've just hit a new sabotage and this is what I'm doing. So it's almost like confessing your behaviour can <laughs> stop it in its tracks. But it also means that you can then use some coping strategies. So for me, I love emotional freedom technique, the tapping. I think that is a brilliant way to stop sabotage in its tracks because I can just go, even though it's it's hard for me to make money, I deeply and completely love and accept myself, even though it's greedy to make this much money so easily. And that can sometimes just release the charge and I can just go, okay, I know what you're doing, money block. I know you're there, I see you, and I'm going to continue on anyway. And that takes practice. At the, at the very first time your money blocks kind of hit you, you believe it's real. You believe that the universe doesn't want you to be successful. You believe that everything's against you. You believe that maybe it's a sign from the universe that you're not meant to do this thing. The second time it happens, you can get past the resistance a little bit. The, the more you practice working on your money blocks and you're really aware of your triggers, it can just last maybe a couple of minutes. So now, for me, it, it won't. That sabotage will not last weeks and weeks. It will last minutes because I can go, oh my god, it's I'm, same old stuff. Like, you know that um, new level, new devil. For me, it's always new level, old devil. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I can just get out of it so quickly. And I see that with the women in my money boot camp as well. The first couple of times, it hits them hard the more they go through it and they realize it's just the same old crap again and again, they can just get just get over it so quickly and just move on. I love that. And, uh, you know, you're talking about those triggers. And as you were talking about the procrastination, I started getting really hot around my neck and I was like, oh, I can so relate to that one. <laughs> yes, and everyone's got different triggers. So a, a few common ones could be that you start to pick fights with your partner um, because life is feeling too good, right? And it starts to trigger some stuff. Um, it could be that you start to spend all of your money. So you have a really good month and then you're just like, well, what can I spend it on? What can I spend it on? And you get rid of it because you're uncomfortable having excess money or having money that you could invest with because it feels like it just triggers that part of you that it's not safe to have money. Um, it could be that you indulge in other behaviours, so you could overeat or um, overdrink or uh, be addicted to social media on your phone. And you know, Candy Crush was a, was um, something. That whenever I had a big month, I would spend the next couple of days obsessively on on Candy Crush. It might mean that you never allow yourself to take a break, and so you burn out. You get sick, um, and it's it's really um, in, entwined with that upper limit stuff that Gay Hendricks talks about in his book The Big Leap, which is a great book. But you know, everyone's got their own little personal flavour of triggers, and it's the same thing again and again. And once you figure that out, you can stop that behaviour in its tracks. You know, if you go, oh wow, I'm picking a fight with my with my partner. Something's going on here. Oh, I've, I'm sick yet again. Something, something is going on here. 
Yeah. It's, it's fascinating stuff. It is fascinating. It really comes down to self-awareness at the end of the day, right? And yeah. so let's just uh, paint a scenario or paint a picture here. So let's just say that somebody is really struggle, struggling to make ends meet or they're in a massive amount of debt or even a little bit amount of debt. It doesn't really matter the, the actual dollar value, I don't think. But what kind of steps can they take to, um, to move themselves forward so that they can meet their financial goals or their yeah. desires? Yep, for sure. And when things are urgent or when things feel really dire, it can be really easy to think that you have to get into action straight away because it feels urgent. But I still recommend that people go and do that money memories exercise because that is the foundation of figuring out where, where your um, issues around money truly come from. And it's very tempting to want to skip that step because it's a bit messy, it's a bit ugly. Um, sometimes you don't want to look at it, but if you do skip that step, you are just building on a very shaky foundation and you are likely just to repeat those same sabotaging behaviours but without the self-awareness of, of why you're doing it and, and how you can get out of it. So let's assume that somebody has done that step. What's the, what is the next step? So I like to follow a very specific process which is um, decluttering is the first step, so that is you know looking at, looking at the ugly stuff and kind of clearing it a little bit. But the next step is clarity, and it's really figuring out what you do want. Because quite often, if I if I hear someone say, oh, I, I really want to make a lot of money, and I go, well, how much do you want to make? A lot of women can't even say that figure, and or they can't really be clear on how much they need. Uh, particularly for people who are in debt, when you say, okay, how much how much debt have you got? They have no idea because they haven't opened their credit card statements or they don't want to look at it and it's like, if I don't look at it, then it will it'll go away by itself. Or if I don't pick a number, then I won't be disappointed if it doesn't if it doesn't come true or if it doesn't happen. So get very, very clear on what it is that you want to make um, this month, this week, whatever. And actually, I, I do this process very clearly. If I need to make money very quickly for something, I make sure I write it down, but I really break that down. So say, for example, you wanted to go to a conference, and I've, I've done this before. I've gone, I just want to make money to go to this conference because I really, really want to go. Well, you have to sit down and go, well, how much is it going to cost for the hotel? How much is it going to cost for my transport? How much is the ticket? And food, like we always forget, it's like, I'll oh, just get the minimum. Like, I'll oh, just ask for the minimum from the universe or whatever. And, you know, I'll skimp on everything. No, write it all down so you actually know because that knowledge, again, is power. That clarity is power. And then here's the trick that women always do. It's so funny. They say, well, I just need to manifest $1,000 or I just need to make $1,000 so I can um, invest in my business or I can go to this conference. And then money starts to trickle in, right? And instead of allocating that money to that thing that they said that they really wanted to do, they start to backtrack and go, well, but the kids need new shoes. It would be really selfish of me to spend that money on me when I need to pay this or this or this. And it's like, well, you've created this um, inflow because you've made, you've come up with a specific number and now you're kind of lying to the universe about what you're going to spend that on, right? And when I say universe, it, you know, if people are triggered by that, that's fine. But you've, you've actually made an intention that you wanted to make this amount of money and that's what you're going to spend it on. And um, quite often, you know, say you manifest $100, well, I really like to cross out that $1,000 and write down 900 because that's actually what you're playing for now, 900 not $1,000. So if you can go through that process and very have clarity what you need money for and where that money is going to go, it makes it much easier, I think, to know the next step, which is to, to actually take action and get that money coming in. It sounds fun to me. I know a lot of people get really stressed out about it and, you know, I, I was in that spot many years ago, but I just think it sounds so fun and you get, there's so much control in have, knowing where your finances are, whether they're good or bad, right? Even if they're yeah. not in a great place, if you're in the red, it's still, it's, there's power in just even knowing where you're at. Well, absolutely. And when I was getting out of debt, I did that same process. I had a spreadsheet and I looked at, you know, I had like five credit cards and two loans and, you know, all that kind of stuff because I started getting those things pre-financial um, crisis when you could just get so much credit and you could get yourself into a lot of trouble. 
And there was power in calling up those companies and saying, what is my balance and what interest rate am I paying? Because I didn't know any of that stuff. And having it in a spreadsheet and knowing that final number. Um, and this works whether you're paying off debt or if you want to uh, create money for, say, an investment or something like that. And everything in between, even just getting you know, kind of to that zero level, just that clarity and power knowing that. And then every time I manifested, when I say manifest, I make, anytime I made a little bit of extra money, I put that towards my debt and it was so motivating seeing that number go down because otherwise it just feels so overwhelming if you don't have that clarity and you don't know. You kind of just make up stories about it. You know, I'm in so much debt or I'm sure the debt's not as bad as I think. I think, you know, it's and it works both ways if you have those goals. Quite often I say to people, well, how much do you want to make? And once they actually get really clear on that number and they get clear on how much they're actually making, sometimes women are already making their goals and they didn't even realize it. So it works both ways, that kind of denial and uh, I guess lack of clarity that that we do sometimes. That's really interesting. I love that. So let's just switch gears a little bit. And um, I have to admit, I have a confession. I have um, suggested in some of my previous videos that bartering is a good idea. Now, I know you were against bartering. So <laughs> watching this video and any of the others, I'm going to take that back without redoing videos. So I would love to hear why you're against it and why it stops us from making money. Yes, absolutely. I think bartering definitely can have its place and I think it's almost a, a rite of passage that we go through because at the beginning of your business, not only do you not have any money sometimes to invest in things, you also don't have a lot of clarity sometimes about what you're really good at and your own true worth. So I did this in my first year of business. I needed um, headshots and I had a photographer in my town who I've worked with since and paid her, thank God, but she needed a website. I'm not a website designer. I don't know why I thought of this, but I had made my own website on TypePad. So I said to her, I'll build your website. You do photos for me. And it, it felt like a really good swap. And I think that's fine right at the beginning of your business to do that because I didn't know what I was good at and I really didn't have a, a good sense of my own true worth. And also, she was doing it out of kind of the same thing. She wasn't really clear on her worth as a photographer yet, even though she's very, very good. So we were just at an energetic match, right? And so that was fine. But I think, I think it is a really important thing to deal in money and to be okay receiving money and sending money. So at some stage, if you do want to barter with somebody, I would say you both pay each other and actually you know, tr transfer that money between you because it should never be a hassle earning money and, and sending money. And that's why it, sometimes it comes down to, oh, well, it's too much of a hassle. It's the same anyway, so let's just swap. And it's like, no, why don't you respect each other, invoice each other and pay each other even if it is a similar amount because it's very, very symbolic. It means that you are in business and you are in business to receive money, not just energy offerings from other people. Mm. And um, quite because because quite often you realise that it's not always a, a fair energetic swap. Someone is usually giving more, or it's or sometimes you do it, but you don't really want the thing that they're they're offering. So it's just never quite right. But above that, it is the symbolic thing of I am in business and I am in business to receive money, and I can afford to spend money on the things that are important to me, my business. Um, and as soon as you say that, as soon as you draw a line in the sand and say, I'm not going to barter anymore, you will always be tested and it will happen within 24 hours, I think, of hearing this and of, of saying no more buttering. Somebody will email you and say, can I have your course and here's what you can have or do you want to barter thing? And it's really easy just to say, I've just drawn a line in the sand and I, I don't do it anymore. Or you say, you know like my mentor, Kendall Summerhawk, who talks about it, she says, blame me, blame Kendall Summerhawk and say I've just done one of her courses and I, I'm not bartering anymore. But really you just say, oh, that's so, thanks so much for thinking of me, um, but, you know, I'll check out your thing 
whatever it is, or check out your service. I'm more than happy to pay for it if it's something that I would like. And you know, same with with what I offer. If if you would love to do it, here's the link. I would I would you know love to work with you. And that becomes easier and easier. And actually, what happens is, once you draw the line in the sand a few times, nobody will ever ask you again. Yeah. Because you're in the business of money. Right, it's so true, and it's I really like the habit that you're creating, especially when you're getting started. Like you said, you know, sometimes you do because you just don't have the money. But even if it's ten dollars, you get into that habit of invoicing someone and giving them money, and then receiving the money for whatever it is that you're getting in exchange, or it's a hundred dollars or whatever. It's that habit that you're creating of being in business. I love that. I think it's fantastic, and it's just yeah. a great. It's a, it's great to get into that. Absolutely, and it's really interesting too when things like that happen when you you don't want to barter anymore. Just see what it brings up for you because that's really valuable information to kind of add to your money memories list. You know, do you feel like a bitch for saying no? Do you feel like you should give everything away for free? Great, where did that come from? Is it attached to one of your money memories? Because it's usually really in line with a block that you have. And everything like that is just an opportunity just to clear some more stuff. So you just get, um, you just become more and more comfortable with money. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I'm just thinking of, this, of so many people who aren't even in the event planning world who barter for services and I, who I'm going to send this video to so they can watch it so that they can um, you know, get a lot of valuable information from it as well. And so Denise, just share with us like one must-have tip that we haven't discussed yet today that you think is like people just have to have in order to move forward. Absolutely. Tracking money is really, really important. So obviously in business we should track expenses, totally. I think you should obviously track expenses. But the thing that people often don't do is track their income and I really think it's important to track your income daily. I have a spreadsheet, very simple spreadsheet, but I've also used pieces of paper where I I check my PayPal account a couple of times a day and I am I just know to the penny how much I'm receiving. And that's really important for a few reasons. One is for gratitude. Sometimes you can be making up stories about, oh no, you know, no one's paying me or I have no money. And it's just that, oh no, actually I do have money coming in. So there's a gratitude part of it. The other part of it is if you're not receiving any money and maybe there's been a couple of days where you haven't made any money, well, that's going to spur you on and that's valuable information because you might need to go and invoice some clients or chase some clients up or send some emails, drum up some business. Don't let weeks and weeks go past before you realize that no money is coming in. And when, you, when you're when you really on it and you're tracking your income all of the time, you see that stuff really quickly and it can spur you into action. Or And if it doesn't, if it spurs you into like a spiral, Again, that's just valuable information to clear and you want to clear it quickly and not wait weeks and weeks before you realize it's happened. That is like the ultimate kick in the ass or motivator, however you want to put it. I That's my favorite tip of today. I'm, I'm going to just put that out there and I'm going to for sure take that one on because I keep track of everything else, all my receipts, everything, and I have for years. I got into the habit of doing that, and but I don't keep track of my income. So yeah, that great, great tip, and I hope that um, everybody watching this is going to take that on too. Actually, I'm going to challenge you to do that, and then comment in the comments below, just with a yes or heck yeah or whatever, lucky bitch, whatever you want to put down there, you put it in there, and tell us that you're going to take on the challenge too. Even just do it for 30 days. So absolutely, it will change your life. It will change your life. Guaranteed, it will change your life. Yeah. It will change your life. Absolutely. Um, so Denise, I want to thank you so much for being here, but before we um, close out, I would love to hear how people can find out more about your book, um, Get Rich Lucky Bitch, as well as your boot camp. So if you don't mind sharing a little bit of info about that, that would be great. Absolutely. So I'm very easy to find. I'm at luckybitch.com or you can Google Denise Lucky Bitch and you will find me. And um, my uh, my book, Get Rich Lucky Bitch, is available on Amazon as a paperback or a Kindle, but you can also get the first couple of chapters free at luckybitch.com slash chapter. chapter. And you can just get the first couple of chapters. You can see if I'm kind of the... You like my tone because, you know, I swear a little bit. I'll, you know, just tell you for free 
you, there are swear words. <laughs> there are swear words in the book, and you know it starts to tell tell about some of those little tips and tricks about how you can really release those money blocks and live a first class life, which is your version of a first class life. So, um, you know, make sure everyone signs up for that, and um, yeah, take it from there. It's a journey. Absolutely, it is, and it's not going to happen overnight. But you have to commit to it, like absolutely doing in life, like brushing your teeth. Right. Every day, <laughs> twice a day. <laughs> it's just, you know, you brush your teeth, and you're in one hand, and then you're writing down your notes in the other, or typing them in with another hand. Whatever it is that works. Exactly. Uh, again, thank you so much, Denise. We've, I'm really excited that you were here today, sharing these invaluable tips for um, money mindset, and uh, just with a lot of gratitude and appreciation for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What money belief is holding you back in your life? And what tip from today's discussion can you use moving forward to attain the financial goals that you're striving for? Head on over to eventplanningblueprint.com and leave a comment now. And if you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Event Planning Blueprint TV and be sure to share this video with your friends. And for even more free weekly advice, head on over to eventplanningblueprint.com and sign up. We'll see you next time. Thank you.